Okay, in this lesson we're going to talk about teardrop entries into holding. So let's get started drawing our holding fix and a nice right turn holding pattern. I'm also going to add in the teardrop holding sector just so you get a better idea about where we're coming from. So here we are, we're tracking straight to the holding fix, whether it be an NDB, a VOR, a GPS waypoint, whatever it is that we're holding at, we're going to go straight there. As soon as we cross the holding fix, we're going to initially turn to a heading that's 30 degrees different than our outbound heading. In this case, the hold's normal outbound heading is 180. Our entry heading is 150, 30 degree difference. We'll get more into how to calculate that in the next slide. So now that we've had our intercept angle established and we're tracking outbound for our entry, we're going to fly that for one minute. The conclusion of one minute, we're going to do a nice standard rate turn all the way around to intercept our holding radial. Track inbound till we cross the holding fix again. Start another standard rate right turn. And here we are in holding. Okay, so how do we figure out which way to turn for our 30 degree intercept angle. Well it's really fairly simple and the quickest way that I know how to figure it out is just a little memory aid. If we have a right turn hold we need to go less. So it will be 180 minus 30 for 150 in this case. We have a left turn hold, best, or adding. So if we have 180, we need to add 30 to 210. Really, this is the only way that I know of to make sure that you can do this quickly and accurately every single time. When you're coming at a hold, you don't really have enough time to draw it out diagram what your heading is, what the new heading is going to be. If you can just remember right turns, I'm going to subtract my 30 degrees, left turns, I'm going to add my 30 degrees. That's all you really need to remember. Okay, all of this discussion has been for a no-wind scenario. But what happens when we're coming at our hold here and the wind is just kicking here out of the east? As we track inbound, we're going to have some sort of wind correction angle in. Once we cross the nav aid, if we just simply turn to our 150 degree heading, we're going to find that our ground track is going to look a little something like this. And once we make our standard rate turn to intercept our holding course, we're going to be well outside the protected side and have to put in a huge intercept angle to intercept the holding course. That's no good. So of course we're going to have to hold a wind correction angle, just like everything else we do in aviation. The wind has a pretty strong vote. So let's say our wind again is out of the northeast here. And here we are, tracking inbound on the holding. Well, as we track towards the fix, we know that we're probably going to have a wind correction angle in. And let's just say that correction is 15 degrees. And here it's left. So as we cross the holding fix, instead of turning to what would normally be our 150, we're just going to apply our current wind correction. So it's a left, we're going to subtract 150. 
from minus 15 gives us 135. It's going to be our new intercept heading. We're going to fly that for one minute, start our standard rate turn, and here we are in holding. The final subject we need to talk about with wind is timing. If you have a strong wind, again out of the east in this scenario, your one minute hold may only put you out this far, in which case you're going to make a standard rate turn outside of the normal holding pattern. Have to re-intercept you're holding radial. Now I always teach to do one minute regardless. This gives you an idea of how strong the wind might be. Because if you get blown back through the holding course, like in this scenario, you know the wind is much stronger out of the east than you might have thought. If you go one minute and you end up outside the fix on this side, you know the wind is not as strong as you thought it was, and more than likely you now have a tailwind instead of a headwind. So one minute's sort of a good baseline. Now if you really know the wind is hurting your ground speed, you can look at your GPS and see that now you're only doing maybe, you know, 60 knots across the ground and you're indicating 90 knots, something crazy like that, then certainly extend your outbound, maybe two minutes, two and a half minutes just so you don't go get blown too far off of your inbound course. But really, unless you have some way of really fixing that, I would still stick to one minute. And that's all there really is to the teardrop holding entry. I hope you learned something, and I look forward to seeing you again in another KL Aviation class.